Hi, welcome to Cooking with Master Vintner. I was flipping through my news feeds the other day and I came across one of those clickbait headlines. You know the ones that say, you won't believe, or you won't understand, or you're dumb enough to click here. And it said, here's why you can't make grape ice cream. And I thought to myself, really? You can't? The basic premise that you can't make grape ice cream is pretty true because grapes are between you know 80 85 percent water by weight and ice cream the good kind the best most flavorful ice cream is less than 60 percent water so uh, grapes aren't a great candidate they're just they're just too watery despite the fact that winemaking grapes are incredibly sugary i mean table grapes are even worse if you try and get table grapes they're only like the five six percent sugar by weight uh, by comparison wine making grapes are incredibly sweet so a table grape is 95 percent water uh, and that would just freeze into a rock solid lump uh, like an ice cube so what is ice cream ice cream is a um it's an emulsion it is a matrix it is well technically it's about 60 percent water uh, about 15% sugars and the remainder made up of fats. Now the way that shakes out in the ice cream itself is it's a combination of ice crystals from the water which are enveloped in a matrix of bubbles from the fats that's stabilized by sugars and often aided by other emulsifiers like egg yolks. Um, so you need all that in place. If you tried to make ice cream out of grapes, you just couldn't get the fat level high enough. You'd get this weird, lumpy, chunky stuff. Um, ice cream that has fruit in it uh, usually is sweetened with fruit syrups, and then the fruits themselves, like the strawberries, are often cooked in a very high sugar solution in order to make them softer in the frozen state. Because uh, if you freeze a strawberry or a cherry, they are as hard as rocks, so you need to do something to soften them up. So I was thinking about all of this while I was looking at this clickbait headline and realized what do those people who can't make grape ice cream not have that I have? That. Master Vintner Wine Kits. Now a Master Vintner Wine Kit, these are the small batch size. They make uh, one U.S. Um, gallon of wine at a time. Very convenient, very fast, four weeks, you've got great wine, buy a whole bunch of them, give them to your friends, great Christmas gift, parties, weddings, anything. Um, what they are is approximately 65 to 70 percent concentrated grape solids by weight, the majority of which is sugar. Because these are made from grapes, from winemaking grapes that are crushed, pressed, and then they are concentrated down. That way we don't have to ship you a full gallon of grape juice, which would already be fermenting by the time it got to your doorstep. Uh, we can ship you a much smaller unit and it's shelf stable because the sugar levels are high. It's the same principle behind jam. That's why jam has a lot of sugar in it, because it won't go bad on the store shelves before you buy it. So these are concentrated sources of sugar. They won't freeze rock solid like grapes would. Aha, uh -huh. you can see where the light bulb went off. So we're, that's gone now. Um, so what I am going to do is I'm going to take old Grindy, my faithful Cuisinart ice cream maker, and I'm going to make a Savillon, which is egg yolks, uh, which are cooked over a double boiler uh, to thicken them without clotting them. Uh, I'm going to put a little sugar in there and a tiny pinch of salt. Uh, it's necessary to get the emulsion good. And when they're darn good and thick, I'm going to mix them with cream and vanilla and some Master Vintner um, wine grape concentrate. Uh, I'm going to pop them into grindy and we are going to make ice cream. Uh, at the very end, I believe I will do a little swirl of the um, Master Vintner juice just at the end to give it a little little look, but we'll see how that works out. I'm not entirely certain uh, how it's going to work in the hardening off process. But the very first step is to make my Savillon. Uh, that'll take a couple of minutes, so uh, why don't you watch while I do that? Savillon refers to a type of sauce made by whisking egg yolks over steaming water. Usually you add a little liquid. In this case I've got a tiny bit of water in there. Uh, the trick with making a savillon is to keep it moving and not overcook it or you'll just make scrambled eggs. I've put a little sugar and a tiny bit of salt in here to help uh, break up the egg yolks. And I'm just whisking it over the steaming water and you can see as I'm doing it, uh, it's beginning to thicken up and there it goes coming together nicely. 
That didn't take too long, and now our sabillon is ready. So let's assemble it. We are going to add some cream. Um, my ice cream maker doesn't hold a lot of volume at once, so I'm using about um, half of this container. It's a 500 mil container, which is, I guess, a pint? U.S.? Yeah, pint. And uh, here I've got my Master Vintner small batch wine kit. It's a Merlot. I'm choosing to make Merlot ice cream today. Uh, now, the math on this is a little bit tricky. We want it to be somewhere around 15%-ish sugar. This is 70%-ish by um, weight. Uh, so if I've got approximately 750 mil, uh, volume liquid, add blah, blah. I'm going to add about a half a cup. That's what I'm going to shoot for. Uh, if I'm a little low on the sugar, the texture could be um, a little harder and a little grittier. If I'm a little high, it can get a little gloppy, a little thick. Have you ever had ice cream that's too thick um, and, and too sweet and it just is all sticky and stuff? That's not good ice cream. Ice cream should melt on the palate. Ice cream should have a good tooth to it. I mean, you should almost be able to chew it a little bit. You know, it should have some something going on there. Um, but it shouldn't be hard and crunchy. So today I'm going to add about a half a cup based on uh, some back of the napkin math, and we're going to see what's, uh, what's going to happen with it. Uh, so this is just about ready to go. Uh, first thing first, I'm going to add a tiny bit of vanilla. This is, uh, I believe this is Tahitian vanilla. It's about a half a teaspoon. Oh, it's Mexican vanilla. Delicious stuff that it is. Uh, the vanilla is a necessary component. Um, it helps round out and fully realize the flavors. You'd miss it if it wasn't there. Just like the pinch of salt that I put in earlier, uh, it's there to not just to help the uh, egg yolks emulsify, but also the sugar needs a little salt to work against, otherwise it's just too sweet and too weird. You need that just a touch, just a balance. So let's go ahead, open up our Master Vintner kit. We'll extract about a half a cup and put it in. And it has instantly turned a really rather pretty purple color. I'm glad. The yellow and the red could have made kind of a brownie mess, but it's actually a very pleasant shade of well, it's almost mauve now. Hmm. Interesting. All right. That's mixed up. Tastes pretty good. This is a Cuisinart automatic ice cream maker. You put the stuff in the basket, you turn it on, and away you go. Uh, I've used the uh, old-fashioned kind where you load them with salt, rock salt, and, and ice, and you turn them and turn it for hours, and it's fun for the whole family. Uh, no, it's not. It's just a lot of work. So I like this one. It's automatic and magical. So I told you, sort of a really nice, pretty color there. Sort of a move. Get that in. And I've only filled it up halfway. We're not making a giant batch today. This is a test batch, but we're going to find out what it's like. And we'll just walk that down, attach our stirring arm, put it in place. This is extremely loud and very boring to watch while it's working. So I'm going to turn it on, turn off the camera, and we'll come back when it's ready to pull out and taste. All right? Whew, the excitement never ends. You know, I'd like to think we all learned something here today. First off, cooking is science for hungry people. Second, sometimes when people say, you can't do it, you should pay attention. Often people who've gone before you have learned everything that you can't do, and the things you can, and how to do them efficiently. On the other hand, sometimes those people really mean, I can't do it, and therefore I believe you can't. You know what? Those people serve as a spur. You should go from there. Oh, and also, you should eat ice cream. <laughs> That's really good. I'm Tim Vettiger from Master Vintner. Uncork or scoop something special.
I gotta do this with some Chardonnay. Mm -hmm.